was handed a book a few years ago, two years ago, at a conference that I was, where I was speaking in Las Vegas, and it showed, you know, this is where you have to, again, willingly suspend your disbelief, it showed how water would crystallize. And they would take a drop of water, or a, a little vial of water, and they would freeze it at a cryogenic level, 273 degrees below zero, at absolute zero. They would freeze it, and they would include in the vial that was being frozen with the water just the words love, typed on a piece of paper, and just the word hatred, typed on a piece of paper. And you would think, well, it's typing. <laughs> it's just words typed on a piece of paper. They would make statements. They would take statements out of the uh, out of the Bhagavad Gita and out of the New Testament and so on. And they showed the crystalline formations that were photographed through uh, microscopes. And when water is crystallized in the same energy field as the word hatred on a piece of paper, their crystalline formations are deformed and distorted. And when water is crystallized with the word love in the same energy field, the uh, crystalline formations, they show the photographs, are these beautiful, perfect, magnificent, uh, divine, like uh, water crystallizations. That everything in the universe is energy and is impacted by the speed at which we calibrate. And all of us all of us can raise the level at which we vibrate in our lives. All of us can do it simply by changing our thoughts, by practicing meditation, by listening to different kind of music, by being in energy fields where we have a knowing, where we reconnect to God, where we make conscious contact with our source. We can change the energy level at which we are living. And getting to a place where you understand that. It's why I like to bring people out, demonstrate to them the food that we eat, the substances that we put in our bodies. Many of you have looked and seen this little thing that I always speak with, this little camel here. Now, I wear this camel for a reason. It has the number 24 written right on it. I don't know if you can get a close-up of that or not. But um, that camel is a symbol to me. It's why I always speak with it on my lapel. You see, a camel is an animal that starts out every day on his knees. And he goes to bed every night on his knees. And he can go 24 hours without a drink. Now, that's something I have been doing for a couple of decades now. Going 24 hours without a drink. And also, I have experienced struggles with addictions in my own life. Alcohol, drugs, and so on. Caffeines, nicotines. <clears throat> and I'd like to suggest to you, because I've noticed here in this uh, group yesterday, that there were a lot of, uh, of you who were uh, uh, in that situation yourself. My teacher once said to me that if you want to reach the levels of being able to perform miracles and attract miracles into your life, you have to purify this temple that you live in. And your temple, the temple that you live in, is something that was intended into this universe with perfection. And any energy that comes into it, like yesterday I demonstrated uh, the impact of aspartame and saccharin on the body. In 1,000 out of 1,000 cases in the eye of the eye, um, Hawkins describes how it doesn't make any difference whether the person knows or doesn't know. Whenever you put that artificial substance into your body, every time you drink a diet soda, Every time you put uh, something called Alestra or one of these weird substances that are manufactured in, in, uh, in laboratories and put, it, put these chemicals into your body, um, you are weakening your body. And letting go of addictions and letting go of the belief that these are things that have more power over you than you have to let go of them 
is one of the energy levels below that calibrates below 200. Every time you light up a cigarette, every time you put substances into your body that make it go weak, you have left your source. You have left God. It isn't spirituality in this, con in this presentation here today is not about what church you attend and what, uh, what scriptures you read. It's about how you stay connected to the perfection from which you were intended in the very first place. And I'd like you to really understand that. And when you do, you'll understand that anything that you do that is self-defeating to this temple, as the Sufis used to say, if you don't have a temple in your heart, you'll never find your heart in a temple. And it's about having a temple in your heart. It's about staying connected. And when you do, exercise becomes a regular part of your life. It's a spiritual experience. The foods that you eat become a spiritual experience. The music that you listen to becomes a spiritual experience. The books that you allow into your home, the programs that you allow to be on your television set, the kinds of ideas that you read in newspapers. So it's this force and counterforce thing. Now, as individuals, we understand when the World Trade Center was hit, um, our first impact, our first inclination was to be kind. What can we do? And you saw people donating blood. We had more blood donated in the first few hours after that than they, they had to st tell people to stop doing it. They had people getting into their fire trucks in Iowa and driving them all the way to Manhattan. They had people going into burning buildings and taking people out. Our whole sense of compassion, because compassion is one of the highest energy levels that you can reach. It, ca it calibrates around 470. That when you have compassion in your heart for those who are operating or living at lower levels, and I remember the story that I heard shortly after the World Trade Center disaster. And it was a grandfather talking to his grandson. And the grandson was looking up at his grandpa, and his grandpa said, you know, he said, I feel as if I have two wolves barking inside of me. He said, the first wolf is filled with anger and hatred and bitterness and mostly revenge. And then he said, I have a second wolf barking inside of me who is filled with love and kindness and compassion and even forgiveness. And the grandson looked up at his grandpa and said, which wolf do you think will win, grandpa? And his grandfather responded, whichever one I feed. And we have to look at what we feed internally in ourselves. Because every time we use force, and what we were talking about at lunch today, it's like, what do you do, someone asked me, with a man who represents these lower energies, like a Saddam Hussein or an Adolf Hitler? What we do is we have to learn inch by inch that humanity has to grow, and that inside each and every body there are cells and every now and then a cell will enter into the body that doesn't want to cooperate with the cells adjacent to it. It wants to start gobbling them up. We call these cancers. We call these illnesses. We call these arthritis. We call them <clears throat> blood diseases and so on. And this cell that doesn't want to cooperate with a cell adjacent to it and has no connection to the whole will start gobbling up every cell. And eventually it's a very stupid organism because it will destroy the very host that it needs in order for it to survive itself. It will kill itself as well. It will have no more host on which it can live. So a cancer cell is a very stupid cell indeed. It destroys itself by destroying that which is next to it. But we don't go in and bomb the whole body. We just carve it out or we isolate it. And today we need to have learned that there are ways to take people like this with mass communications and all of these wonderful things that we have, these satellites and all of this growth that we've had as a people. And we can take and pinpoint and isolate and use the awareness of the world to point to where this is taking place and it can be isolated and set aside and we don't have to go in and bomb the whole body to destroy it in the first place. 
And it's something that we have to learn, as I said yesterday when Einstein reminded us, that until we come up with an alternative to using force as a way of resolving our disputes, we are doomed as a people to destroy ourselves. We'll destroy ourselves. The weapons that we have put aside in order to resolve our disputes cannot even be used because if we explode them and the wind changes, it blows back on us the very thing that we are attempting to put onto our enemies. So it's a, a difference in, in, in a shift. Now, when we, we move from uh, 200 up into the 300s and up into the 400s and 500s, what happens is we begin to make a shift away from force and we begin to respond with higher and higher levels of awareness and higher and higher levels of consciousness. And as we do, we make a shift in the impact that we have on other people. If you calibrate below 200 and 87 and a half people, 87 and a half percent of the population of this world today calibrates below 200, which means that they first of all cannot make a distinction between truth and falsehood. They can be told that these are your enemies, this is who you are to hate, these are the people you are to kill, and there's nothing in there that offers them anything other than the obedience to go ahead and do that. 87.5% of the people use force and have a counterforce. They're constantly, every time they're in a field of force, they use a counterforce. <clears throat> when you begin to move your energy level above 200, you shift and make a difference in the impact that you have on those people around you. So that when someone at three, four, or 500 at these calibration levels who is using the energy of love and kindness and forgiveness and, and, and peace and so on, when these people are in your presence, they make a very significant difference in how you react to them and on even the ability to manifest and attract abundance into one's life or healing. So that, here's, here's how it works. A person who is below 200 is someone who is moving against, who has to have an enemy, is someone who drains power, is always looking for energy from someone else, is trying to take it away from you. This is someone who needs to argue. This is someone who needs to prove a point. This is someone who needs to make you feel worse about yourself and yet generally when you're in the in the energy field of someone below 200 when they leave your energy space when they leave the field that you are in them with them you feel worse about yourself you feel drained for having been in their experience you feel weakened and you feel as if you need to get away from that because they are drainers of energy they take and they need to confront and they need to have an argument now, the difference is that a person above 200, particularly in the 3 and 400 range, is a person who does never drains, but instead is someone who supplies energy. And when you're in the energy field of someone like this, they make you feel better about yourself. You not only feel better about yourself, but for having been in the presence of that person, you feel energized rather than having been depleted of your energy. Do you see the difference? You feel as if you can do things. You feel as if there's nothing that can stop you. You feel as if you've been awakened. You feel as if everything is going to work. And you have a sense of faith and a sense of beauty and a sense of knowing that there's goodness in the world. But mostly you have a good feeling about yourself and it's all because of being in the energy field of someone who calibrates to a higher frequency. They don't take, they give. They don't argue, they supply. They don't want from you, they offer you.